Alzheimer's disease is one kind of dementia. Alzheimer's disease is one of the most often dementias, it comprises approximately two-thirds of all cases. Additionally, we have Levy body dementia, about a quarter, and we have vascular dementia, which is about a third to half of the patients that have dementia. Altogether, we have more than 100%. So this shows already that we have an overlap of different dementia, especially Alzheimer's disease and vascular dementia in old age. There are also some rare diseases, for example, frontotemporal lobe degenerations or prion diseases, inflammation in the brain or toxins like CO, coal monoxide can lead to dementia cases, and of course tumors, if tumors are located in certain regions of the brain, they can cause dementia. One very big problem is uh, sports, uh, for example boxing or American football or other sports that involve brain harming or problems with the brain that can lead to dementia at very, very early stages. In the 1980s, uh, more and more people became older and Alzheimer's disease became more and more a problem. And here are two examples from the 80s. One on the left is Ronald Reagan, a former president and actor from Hollywood. And on the right side, Rita Hayworth, who was an actor at Hayworth, that got Alzheimer's disease in the 80s and the research started uh, to be more intense. Alzheimer's disease is named after a medical doctor in Germany, Alois Alzheimer, who was born in Marktbreit in Germany, in southern Germany, and studied at different locations in Berlin, Würzburg and Tübingen. And he got a patient in 1901 at the hospital in Frankfurt uh, with the name Auguste Deter. Later he moved uh, to other universities like Heidelberg and Munich and he became the director of the Brain Anatomical Lab in Munich. In 1906, when Auguste Deter died, he got the brain and presented the changes of the brain in front of an audience in Munich um, in a speech uh, collecting all the information of the patient and the histological changes presenting this. And the people were at the time not astonished about this and not really interested in this. In 1912, he became professor in Breslau and died at an age of 51 uh, after he was there three years. Auguste Deter, the first, first patient of Alois Alzheimer, uh, the file of the patient was recovered in 1995 together with the slides and I was able to have a look at the slides in 1998 at the Congress in Germany. Uh, the original slides that were stained by Alois Alzheimer, very impressive uh, silver stains. Um, the patient came to the doctor because they had, she had suspicion that her husband has another woman somewhere else and she was very severe about this, And but nobody knew what is the problem and additionally she had uh, memory and cognition problems and at the time she got treatment with alcohol for example to calm her down and also with bathing, biology we call this, and some poisons and toxins that we will not use or would not use anymore nowadays. She died five years later and the brain was sent to Alois Alzheimer and he investigated this brain and uh, made the diagnosis of a cerebral atrophy, a severe atrophy of the brain, arteriosclerosis, and she, the, the, the cause of death actually was a pneumonia and a nephritis, an inflammation of the kidneys. So what do we see in the brain of Alzheimer's disease patients? Here you see amyloid deposits. This is an amyloid plaque or two amyloid plaques in brownish. These deposits develop in the brain and lead to problems with the neurons around. Here in blue you have the neurons and these deposits here are waste products that are located within the brain and disturb the function of the neurons. And those neurons here you see on the second uh, picture here are neurons that form tangles. We call these tangles hyperphosphorylated proteins in those neurons and the function of the neurons is really hampered and finally they die. Additionally we find deposits in vessels. The vessels are clotted full with amyloid so that the nutrition for the brain is hampered and causes severe problems. And this all leads to an atrophy of the brain so the brain substance is reduced, the neurons die and the brain gets a brain atrophy as shown here in those pictures. The patient's substance, gray substance of the brain is massively reduced and this is what you see if you take an MRI image of the brain of a patient with suspicious uh, Alzheimer's disease. 
Here on the right side, you can see a normal brain, this here, and um, this part, the smaller part here, is a diseased brain, and especially the region or the location of short-term memory is di really diverse. Here you have a normal size of the hippocampus, and the disease side, the upper brain, uh, is massively reduced. The brain tries to get rid of this problem, of, these, of the location and of the deposition, and this in red you have the amyloid deposits in the brain and here in brown you have small cells. These are inflammatory cells. We call them macrophages and these macrophages try to digest all those depositions in the brain. It works for a while. This is here from a mouse model. So these cells proliferate and you get even more cells which try to eat up all the deposits. But in the end the function is not sufficient and they get incorporated in those amyloid plugs. So the plaques grow and grow and grow, and this leads to a problem that is a problem for the patient. The disease starts usually in the location of the hippocampus at the temporal lobe, and then continues via different uh, locations in the brain to the frontal lobe, and then finally ends up in the occipital lobe of the patient. Depending on the stage of the disease, on the state of the patient, several or different clinical settings are possible. So the patient usually, usually starts with short-term memory problems and later gets behavioral problems, orientation problems and other things.